You ready? Ready. Awesome. We're here. Julie Putnam is my guest today. Um, hey, we're here every other Tuesday talking kind of career development. And and actually, Julie brought this one to me um, as I was. I have a few other topics we were looking at. And she goes, Kyle, I want to talk about job burnout. And I was like, yes, because guess what? We're all experiencing it to some degree. I think some more than others just on where we've come from. And so I'm excited to talk to you today about that. Um, Julie, tell us, how, how do you, how'd you get where you were? Tell us your quick story from your at Vaco. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Yeah. This is very fun and exciting. So yeah, I've been at Vaco now for, oh my gosh, 17 years. And I started off actually at the receptionist desk. I was, Love it. Bur- I was burnt out. I was burnt out doing marketing and I wanted to work at the receptionist desk. Well, short time passed. I decided recruiting looked like a lot of fun and the rest is history. And I've been in that role now for quite some time. Awesome. Love it. Back in just progression. I've been through a 17 years. Goodness gracious. I have a 17 year old and it, it goes, it gets, it's like, it goes so fast, but it like, it's, it's a long time too. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Hey, talk to me real quick. Job burnout, right? Right. I think, I think, unlike any other time we've had, I think this is a really, really relevant topic just because of the professional burnout, the go, 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 the stress there, personal, um, just the outer surroundings, you know, with COVID and all the things that are going on that we can't control. I mean, talk to me about a little bit of that kind of what, what's the buildup, what's the feeling from Absolutely. your vantage point? I mean, burnout, job burnout, there's nothing new about that. I think we've yeah. all experienced it being at Vaco for 17 years. I know I've experienced it. You just, I think what you have to do is just identify what that looks like. What does job burnout look like? Because it looks like many different things. And I know it's kind of a taboo topic. People are a little bit afraid to talk about it, especially with their employers in fear of losing their job, being looked at differently. And I think we just want to break that taboo and just have an open dialogue where employers and employees can feel like they can come together and really work on a solution for everyone in the workplace. Well, I think the the employer can definitely contribute highly to it, right? I mean, I think as far as unclear expectations, right, lack of control, um, just kind of a swirling feel where it's just like, oh, hey, do this. No, 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 stop. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. Do that. And I think, you know, clients kind of do that to us a little bit on the the job search, the hunt. We put right. we pour all heart and soul to some of these searches and I'm like, hey, we're going to stop. And you're like, I'm working so hard on this. <laughs> can I not do anything? Right. Right. So it's kind of a personal piece to our, our business. But I mean, I think it's also too, it's, it's a lonely spot as well. Right. And Very. so, if, and I think if you're not, like you talked about, if you're not communicating, like, Hey, here's how I'm feeling. And I think that is the biggest thing in the past 18 months that I've realized, like how people are feeling have, have has always mattered. Right. But I think a lot of people check that at the door at yeah. work and become a little bit more robotic than they should. And so I think, you know, having somebody to talk to or, or approaching a situation of like, Hey, listen, just because you have job burnout doesn't mean you need to be fired. Right? Absolutely. Doesn't, need to be- <laughs> doesn't mean you have to jump ship on your current job either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, I think that's maybe sometimes the first go-to is like, I need out of this situation. So yeah. I think what if we just like, look at what are the identifying factors of job burnout? What do those look like? Right. Yeah. G- walk through those, Julie, do you have some and kind of your, yeah. your perspective and kind of what are those and, yeah, absolutely. I know I know the Mayo Clinic has a lot of great things out there, especially the internet itself, but the Mayo Clinic in particular kind of outlined five stages of burnout and it makes a lot of sense. First stage, stage is the honeymoon phase. Everything is rocking and rolling, under the past, it feels great, you're experiencing high job satisfaction, everything is going wonderful. That's phase one. Phase two is kind of the onset of stress. It's a second stage of burnout where you become aware some days aren't as easy as some as other days were. It's just becoming a little bit more difficult. Again, you can handle it. Then chronic stress. That's the third stage. That's when it becomes not fun. That's when it's like every day you're feeling that stress going in. The next stage is the burnout stage. That is when you've hit your limit. But then the final stage is habitual burnout. That is when it's like nothing's getting better. You haven't talked to anyone. You're feeling that just dread and doom each day you're going in. And that is the place you don't want to get to because then you start start making rest, 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 rash decisions on things. Yeah. Get, I would imagine you get pretty cynical where, where you're just 
tiredness. You're, you're probably maybe going to other factors outside of a alcohol abuse or substance Absolutely. abuse, going from that to kind of numb the pain of that. Going away from other relationships in your life. Yep. Like there's, there's definitely signs and people are aware. It's, it's not just something that affects you. It affects people around you as well. For sure. I, mean, yeah. I think it's important to kind of how you're showing up and also having the relationships. Hopefully somebody, if you are in this situation, you're listening, you're like, God, oh, this is me. Or you're like, man, I think I have a friend like this. Julie, how, what's the best way, you know, if you're, you're, you've said you felt the burnout, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you're unaware, you're not, we talked about self-awareness previous life or my previous um viewing uh, of LinkedIn Live and Enneagram and helping become self-aware. Julie, if you're unaware that you're Mm -hmm. experiencing job burnout and I'm your friend Mm -hmm. and I see this in you, what's some ways that maybe I could approach you to talk about job burnout or questions I could ask you that makes you feel one, that I'm caring and two, that I'm not judging you? Absolutely. I think, you know, first of all, if you have a friend that you're just sensing some Something's not right, a little bit off. I just approach them. Be like, hey, let's have a talk. Is everything, you know, everything going okay? You seem to be a little more stressed than usual, right? And just kind of come from that empathetic tone. Like you seem just a little bit different than usual. Let's let's discuss this. And I think that way, maybe that will open your friend to talking about what's going on. Maybe not, but the fact that you're caring and you're approaching them is the first step because a lot of people are just too afraid to talk about it. Like they feel like they're alone. They feel like you really don't know where to turn. So just having that dialogue, yeah. that open conversation is a good first step with a, a friend or even a employee that you feel like that may be hitting that job burnout phase. Yeah. And I would imagine from your standpoint, when you're asking to somebody who's probably not comfortable sharing yet or not comfortable with you, they're probably going to deny. Absolutely. Right? And I would imagine just being there and continue to ask the, Hey, how are you doing? And that's a question I will say in corporate America. And I, and I had a meeting with somebody last week um, that they don't directly work with me, but I think they were, they're like feeling a little bit. They're like, I just wish somebody would ask me how I'm doing. And I'm like, wow. And it's really powerful because it's really a simple question to ask, but a lot of people, the main, corporate America or just people in a job and they're busy. They're trying to go, they're trying to get things done. They're going to the next meeting. And, and I think just stopping and looking around for a minute and just yeah. sitting and understanding of kind of like one, how are, how am I doing? Right. And two, how are the people around me doing? Absolutely. And, and unless you get on a one-on-one setting and look in their eyes and be like, Hey, how, how are you? Right. And then somebody's like, wow, somebody's seeing me number one. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. And number two is somebody's caring. Like they they care about me. They care about my feelings. And so I think that that level of empathy for for an organization is is lacking big time. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think yeah. And I think it's and I and I'm and I'm and I'm guilty of it too at times, right? If I look at my schedule today and it's like go, go, go. And right. how am I asking other people? And there's probably some people watching that and they're like, well, Kyle, won't you ask me how I'm doing? I'm like, that's a fair, that's fair, right? And so that's I think fair. just constantly looking at that vantage point right. and as a manager, how, how is my team doing? How are they? Do I know them? What's their current personal situation? How are they doing at home? Like, right. I think you, you know, you bring your whole self to work. Right. And you I think do. a lot of people think you compartmentalize it, but we walk in as a father, as a brother, as a son to work. And like, that doesn't change. Um, and think about the pandemic, all of a sudden our work life and our personal life became one unit. Totally. And yeah. so that just put that additional pressure on people where it's just a horrible cycle of stress, pressure, burnout, yeah. stress, pressure, burnout. Yeah, for sure. Walk, walk me back through kind of the causes. So I, I think you talked yeah. a little bit about that as far as, um, you know, isolation is right. one kind of job. Lack of control. Control. Um, um, unclear job expectations. Yeah. Talk to me about that a little bit, Julie, as far as somebody in your situation um, where it's like, is it, what, what, what brings that upon you? Is it, is in that for our business, we have many bosses, right? We have the clients as our bosses and this and that talk about, talk through your kind of personal from that standpoint. I think being remote right now is kind of putting a challenge in um, that unclear job expectation potentially, I think not being with your coworkers, not being surrounded by your supervisor, hearing those conversations, knowing what's 
what's going on. I think that's a big part of it. Um, not saying all jobs need to be in person, but it definitely can lead to people not really knowing what the expectations are and not really having clear understanding. Yeah. No, I think, I think everybody wants to, I think individually, everybody's like loves the remote idea because it's right. benefits them individually. But I think holistically, if you stay isolated remotely, I think at end of the day, is more hindering than it is assisting, right? I think it assists your personal life more than it does your professional. And they even it's, say job burnout has potentially has to do with a little bit of like anxiety and depression. So if yeah. you are isolating, trying to work independently and alone, that can that can build up and that can lead For to sure. feelings of of you know isolation. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and then also too, we talked about the kind of workplace dynamic dysfunction, right. you know, leadership changing, swirling of that, not sure who's right. in charge Absolutely. can cause that, um, you know, and those, are, and those are real, those are real problems too, you know, and yeah. that, that may be something that that person that is experiencing that burnout is that they can look at and be like, okay, what is working for me here? What is not? If there is high turnover, if there is unclear job expectation, if there is, um, you know, toxic environment um, if you are in the workplace, but even if you are remote, maybe it is time that you need to look, you know, start really thinking about, is this somewhere I need to be long-term? Yeah. Because it's not, right. not, staying is not always yeah. the option. No, right? for sure. For sure. I mean, I think that's, that kind of leads us into like, okay, we've talked about it, what it is, what are the symptoms, how to cause it. So, okay. What do you do, Julie? So you're experiencing right. burnout. Let's, right. let's, what's the, what are kind of some steps? Plan of actions. Go, yeah. Plan of actions. So I think, Number one, evaluate your options. Like, look at everything. Do I have to stay at this job? What What does that look like? Just look at it. You know, look at everything in whole. You got your pros and your cons list, right? Start well, I think too with that, Julie. It's also important because we get a lot of people calling us about like, "Hey, I'm looking. I want, I'm ready to make a move." Well, really, truly understanding what your why, because I will tell you, newsflash: the reason why people change jobs is not because of money. Right. It's just not. No, uh, I'm not saying it's not a part of it, and it's a part of the equation. But they really change jobs typically for a from a boss or an environment, right? Which absolutely, i.e., is kind of falling into kind of what we're talking about with job burnout. So, no, you make a great point there. Is evaluating your options. Talk to some mentors. Talk seek to people support, that have, seek support, totally. and that can be internally or externally in your workplace. Sometimes people are more comfortable going externally, talking to a friend, yeah, a therapist. Um, yep. trusted um, mentor that you have. For sure. Um, you know, there's other things that, are, you know, try relaxing activity, get some exercise, some, get some sleep. I mean, who isn't lacking sleep these days, right? So if you're not in your best mental health space, you're going to experience burnout and you might experience some things that are just a, a symptom or something that comes from other things you're feeling in life too. Hey, I'll tell you about sleep. I've never done this during the workday because I really don't have a place to go. But a 15 minute power nap does wonders yes. in an afternoon or, an, or a weekend for me. Yes. Because I'm not like a two hour, like I feel like if I sleep like two oh. hours, you wake up in the yeah. morning, you're like, I'm done. Yeah. But like you set a little alarm and just doze off for 15, 20 minutes. Like you wake up just like really clear, yeah. clarity. And, and like, like you said, if you don't have a space in your office, try meditation. Find just a quiet room, yeah. go outside and just close your eyes and just be mindful of your breathing, mindful of your yep. thoughts for 10 minutes, five, 10 yep. minutes. If you don't have a nap room, that's the next best option you can do. Yeah. Well, it's crazy that well, you, you mentioned breathing. And so I've, I have an executive coach that kind of worked through with me on different things and dealing with a lot and running to meetings. And she's helping me kind of how I show up, right? Mm -hmm. To me, just how I enter a meeting with other people. And I kind of wear what I came from on my shoulder sometimes and yeah. then I can bring that in there. And then if it's you with you, Julie, you're like, Oh, Kyle's upset and turned off. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just dealt with a lot. Right. And so right, she, right. before I walk into a room, she's like, Hey, three deep breaths, like just, and then shake smile, it off, shake it off, shake it off. Yeah. And so yeah. that it really works. It and does. so I think if you're coming through something, be clear because how I just am real cognizant or trying to be of how I'm showing up two different people because how I show up to you right now and then where I'm going to the next, like they don't intertwine. Right. right. But I may be, I'm probably carrying and a lot of people do this, carrying their 9am meeting to their 2pm meeting. Uh, right. Absolutely. And so that's a part of burnout. Right. And so I think the breathing, the meditation is a great way. It's super simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was 
frankly, not the most intelligent thing ever. And I'm like, it really, it really does work. I'm telling you, if anything yeah. I've learned through this past year is we've got to look at new ways of going about things. We have to look yeah. at new ways of taking care of ourselves. We have to look at new ways of taking care of others. Um, and just really, I mean, as we're in the process of taking care of ourselves, have an open ear to see what's going on around you. Do you want to lose that? favorite coworker of yours? Do you want to lose, you know, um, someone who has supported your team for so long? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. So speak up. That That is the biggest thing I can say is just speak up. If you feel something, speak up. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing too, is like, I will say like, if you don't feel like your voice is being heard a lot of times, it's because you're not speaking up. Right. right. Try. And now if you get turned down and you're not listening, you know, that's, that's all the, a few things. Right. But I think that's the biggest thing is, is um is not hearing that and, and 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 going forward. So Julie, hey, give us a plug for those that don't know Vaco. If they want to find a new job, mm -hmm. what's what's like the best step? What what should they do, Julie? They should email me at j p u t n a m at vaco .com. And if you are not in the area that I service, as far as skill set wise. I definitely can get you in contact in some, with someone in Vega who has your skill set and is going to be on top of it. Um, we have an amazing, amazing team sure. of, of many different divisions within Vega that can handle everything from technology, IT, accounting, finance, uh, human resources. Uh, well, the good, th the good thing is too, Julie, we get inundated with people just because they know our brand and who we are. And we help people find jobs. Come to us. We'll give you something. We'll, we'll, give you some, we'll give you some tips, interview tips, resume tips, kind of how, how to handle yourself. Most people will take a five minute call with you. We may know a company. Hey, have you thought about these two or three companies to reach out to if, right. it's, not in our, if, if it's not in our wheelhouse? So, I mean, I always tell people too, is like, and even contacting us doesn't mean you're looking for a job. I mean, I think you're just networking. And if we don't know who you are, right, we can never help you on kind of what you want and where you want you your career. You can never so, network too much. That's right. Sure. And that's the biggest, yeah. We can. That's a whole nother topic of networking, <laughs> Julie, on that. So, um, Next so time. we don't want to stress people out as you're burning out. So, but this has been awesome. <laughs> this has been fantastic, Julie. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I will see everybody in two weeks. Thank you, Talk Kyle. To you guys soon. Alrighty, bye bye. Bye.